Is this one of your most efficient? Davidson versus Wichita this year. They are. Yeah. What you gonna do? I think. Some bets here? Huh? No, oh, for sure. We don't bet. <laughs> we don't bet a six. <laughs> I bet you the collar on your dress, the dress shirt. <laughs> All right, fire away. Monte, Monte, first row here. Steph, considering all of the stuff you guys went through last year on and off the court, uh, how much of that you think can help you, help you guys grow and develop? Uh, everybody talks about how tough it was last year to get through it all. And do you think when you look back on it, that those are things that can make you guys stronger and better going into this year? Uh, I feel like, like you say, every year is different. There are different challenges, different obstacles, whatever the case is, and especially to win a championship, you're gonna go through some ups and downs, whether it's injuries, lack of energy from time to time, lack of focus, rough parts of the schedule, whatever it is. Um, that's gonna happen this year somewhere, you know, at some point. We had to figure out a way to you know, rally the troops and keep our eye on, on being at the, you know, the best that we can be throughout the year, looking to you know, peak at the right time. Um, and really a, a certain, have that smooth transition with the new additions that we have. So, I mean, there are a lot of things for us to focus on this year in terms of like many goals that will lead to uh, us winning another championship, as well as dealing with the hurdles that will, will come with just the length of the season. Right hand side, front row, Mark. So it's that Mark Dina Barry and his group with uh, you know, the ankle and the knee stuff you had last year. What did this offseason do for you both in terms of rejuvenating and you have to get any procedures or anything like that sort? No, uh, it's just more so <coughs> get with my, my trainer about uh, the right approach to the summer in terms of how much I was on my feet strength conditioning work and all that that I usually do, kind of ramp that up a little bit more. Uh, but with the perspective around um, not burning myself out over the summer in terms of, I had definitely had a knee, had an ankle situation last year that needed time to recover. And uh, I wanted to really try to pace myself over the summer. Um, it's probably one of the best summers I've had in terms of my prep work going into a year. So I'm excited about what that'll mean on the court. Front row, left hand side, Marcus. Steph, with uh, Durant signing a one plus one, we are all gonna be asking about it all year. What's the key for you guys to not let that be a distraction or an issue in the locker room knowing that you'll have three free agents potentially next year? That doesn't matter right now. We have five preseason games, 82 regular season games, and hopefully 16 wins in the playoffs. And you can ask all the questions you want. So I think KD is going to have that perspective. The Marcus had that perspective. Even Draymond and Clay with their contract situations. It's, you can nitpick everything, and that's that's what's going to happen. It's part of what we do for a living. But the best teams and the best individuals are able to shut that out when it comes to playing basketball and enjoying the opportunity that we have as a team to do that. So, um, yeah, I feel like we have the right guys with the right mindset to be able to turn that off when they need to. Row right hand side here, Janie. Uh, the Warriors announced uh, Bruce Frazier as, as one of the promotion uh, uh, promotions today in terms of to assistant coach. How how happy are you for him? And, and he's meant so much to, to your skill work and shooting and drills. Uh, first, I didn't know the official announcement. Like that's that he's the cat a catalyst to it. Uh, who we are as a team and our identity. He does way more than just quote unquote coach. He's a, he's a people guy and understanding the, the ins and outs of what makes a cohesive unit with all the different personalities you have and whatnot. And he has such a great awareness and feel and touch the his communication, his timeliness and whatnot that go way beyond just X's and O's or what you see me do on this basket after practice and stuff like that. So you need a guy like you that has great feel. He's really genuine and authentic with everything that he does. Um, and for me to have that daily interaction with him, that kind of keeps my perspective you know, straight as well, no matter what happens throughout the season. So, uh, you know, it's obviously great to have him, but for that to be recognized in terms of his position is huge. 
front row, left hand side, Anthony. Yeah, have you, uh, have you envisioned like on a one and five type pick and roll stuff with, with Cousins, and then as the point guard, potentially, you know, on that unit that will have five all stars, um, you know, have you envisioned the, the good of that, but also maybe the challenges of trying to make sure everyone gets uh, their touches? Yeah, it's a. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot to think about in terms of opportunity. Um, what I probably should do is like spend like 50 hours logging on 2K, and just simulate it all, see what uh, see what we'll see what happens, see what works and doesn't work, see what I can use on the court. But we got three kids, so that ain't happening. But uh, we'll see see how it happens with when he comes back. We're obviously gonna have a lot of uh, minutes logged in terms of Damian playing the center and JB kind of filling in the. The, the forward and center spots and rotating those guys through it. And then when, when DeMarcus comes back, um, we'll obviously have a game plan of, of how we want to attack those situations, how the rotation will happen and whatnot. And, um, our IQ in terms of being in the right spot and being purposeful about what we do, I think we'll take over as the season goes on. Right hand side, third row back. Uh, Stefan, Annika, I'm from Swedish Radio, there's so many stars in this league, but there's only one Swede and now he's on this team and the Golden State Warriors are already incredibly popular in Sweden. Uh, what do you think about Jonas Rebkona that is joining the team and what do you think his role will be on the team? I mean, he's going to be huge for us, he's filling holes and pieces. I think he's a really versatile player, he's tough, he can shoot, and he can play defense. Um, all things that we need from that wing position, so... Uh, the one thing I've noticed just about him, he's, he's just, he seems like a very confident guy in terms of um, when he gets that opportunity, he'll, he'll take it and run with it. And I think he's very motivated after you know, the last couple of years just kind of playing spot tennis and whatnot, having an official role on a, a team that has a chance to win a championship. Um, I think that will hopefully unlock something from him that, uh, that we would love to see. Middle section, second row back, Mark. Steph. Um, does it seem like you guys have managed what to do now that you have experience in it? Your off-season time better? You, you guys don't seem as fatigued. You, you, everybody seems a little bit more spry than perhaps the last two years. Um, and also, does it also help that, you know, your thoughts on it, LeBron being in L.A., that a lot of attention is, has gone south? No, that second part doesn't matter in terms of we know we're going to be our biggest call it enemy I guess in terms of how we approach the season like last year between September and December it kind of sucked to be honest in terms of like the vibe like we were all trying trying to figure it out play you know at a higher level than we uh, than we were but it never really clicked the way we wanted to I don't think anybody wants to go through that feeling again because it was just it was, it was it was it was tough in terms of just we knew how we, what we were supposed to be doing I think everybody's intentions are right, but just with the way that the summer and preseason last year went, it just didn't click until later. This year, we want to really enjoy what we do. And it starts with tomorrow in practice, setting the right tone, having the right, you know, like you say, excitement and energy and juice. I understand it is a, it's a marathon. It's a lot, a lot of time between now and April and May and June, but uh, if we go about it the right way to start the season, uh, it can feed on itself in terms of the expectation we have night in, night out, unlocking some of the young guys in terms of them being in the rotation, things like that, and then doing what we do. Middle section, third row back. Steph, Jason Dumas, Cron for Sports. Um, obviously, you're a very accomplished player throughout your career. Uh, you've been through a lot. You know, you've been through injuries, you've won championships, won MVPs, you've lost championships. So I'm sure your perspective to the game has just changed over that period of time. What's your mindset at now? How has your approach changed and where's your perspective heading into this season given all you've been through in your career? It's really cliche, but just staying in the moment and understanding what's at stake this coming year. Uh, there's a lot to gain. There's a lot more to accomplish. Uh, I'm obviously very appreciative and happy and proud of you know, the, the images you see on the practice study around here and the memories that we've had, but we're right in the thick of another run and you don't really have time to kind of sit back and, and rest and relax and say look what, we, look what we've done. Um, I don't think any of us got to this point by doing that and that shouldn't change now. So uh, these, like 
these pictures in here are just motivation to go after more because it, it does feel that good to be, you know, the champs and to have what was all that comes with it and do it with guys that you, you like, you know, playing basketball with and like playing for from a coaching staff perspective too. So uh, nothing lasts forever in this league. But we've always said we want to keep this going as long as we can and we're right in the thick of it. Middle section in the back, Ron. So you guys all seem to have invested at some point, a lot of you a lot more heavily than others. How much do you guys talk about that amongst yourselves, the companies that you're investing in, and how much of that is uh, you know, the opportunity you have here in the Bay Area with the number of startups and the number of venture capitalists? What kind of opportunities do you have here that you wouldn't have in another NBA city? I think we've done a <clears throat> great job of just doing it our own individual unique ways we we definitely talk about us topic of conversation on the daily of um, what opportunities guys are aware of what they've invested in how they can get other guys involved more on the like just overall education of <clears throat> what's out there um, if you look at pretty much everybody myself Andre Draymond KD Marcus, guys have so much going on off the court that it's only amplified by um, you know what other guys are doing in the league and kind of creating that that momentum and that wave uh, from, from year to year. I think being in Silicon Valley definitely helps. You get to meet a lot of different people and network, and you kind of are right in the thick of things. But guys in the NBA in the whole, no matter what city they're in, are finding ways to get to expand in that area. Uh, as the years go on, I think that's pretty pretty special to watch and be a part of that growth. Left-hand side, third row in the back, Felicia. Steph, you said that this was your best off-season prep-wise, but it was also uh, your best off-season personally. You got your third ring and you had your third kid. How is Cannon different? Uh, having a boy, how is that different? How is he different than your other two? Every, every parent knows, I guess, that uh, every kid's a little bit different. They have something unique about them. And for us, it's definitely special to uh, welcome him to the family. And, um, he's only three months old now, so still a lot of, lot of, lot of time to go. So uh, definitely happy. Uh, he hasn't gone to an NBA game yet, so we'll check that off the box very soon. Middle section in the back. Do you see that uh, shaping as a historic achievement, or do you, do you feel that you already made the history as a team? Uh, I think we have made history, but in terms of what's in front of us, again, you got to be able to turn the page and look ahead, and that's that's the opportunity that's in front of us. Uh, it gets even more, uh, I guess, elite in terms of how few teams have accomplished the three peak. I think only one other team has gone to the finals five times in a row, if I'm correct. I think it's happened. So like all those things we should talk about because it's it's kind of uh, rare air, but it doesn't change our process in terms of how we go through training camp and the season and building towards that. So. I don't think anybody should shy away of, of talking about that, you know, having that conversation about what this means historically, but uh, this should be only motivation to. Last two for Steph over here, right hand side, Jeannie. Steph, Steph, uh, with this being the last season at Oracle, what, what do you sort of take from the, the home court advantage you guys have, have developed here and, and the special fans and, and also looking forward to, to a new arena too. I mean, it, it's a big deal. We're moving to San Francisco. Can you kind of talk about both of those those things? Yeah, this last year is going to be special. This is, uh, you know, how many years we played at Oracle, the journey, um, you know, for some, for some pretty down years, to some really entertaining basketball but didn't win much, to now having won three out of the last four. All that happened in Oracle Arena, so. Uh, our fan base has been tremendously supportive. They've given us a a feared place to play in from an opponent standpoint in terms of the noise and the energy and the atmosphere. That's something we really relied on. And honestly, for me, it's my 10th year in the league. That's been my only experience. And it's something that I remember for a very long time. And I think this year is about obviously representing that to the highest, honoring that, celebrating it, 
trying to go out in style with one more championship and uh, and then obviously turn the page. But right now, this year is going to be really, really memorable. And I think we have a, a, an extreme opportunity to create a, a dope story around uh, the last year in Oakland. Final one for Steph right here in front with Logan. Uh, uh, Steph, obviously, uh, DeMarcus isn't going to be out. He's going to be out for the offset of the season. You're going to have a three-way competition for the center position. How does that change how you, uh, I guess, approach the center position, being that you haven't had a young young guy there for the center position? I think it could be an amazing opportunity in terms of something new, something fresh, and a chance for one of those young guys to really surprise people in terms of the work that they put in. I mean, Looney, JV, Damian, Jones, I mean, they all have an extreme opportunity to take their impact to a whole other level. Um, obviously, with Zaza and Javille going, D West, there's ample opportunity. And with the core that we've had and we've established, inserting those guys into the fold more consistently, especially early in the season, um, that can take us to another level and take you know, those three guys to another level as, as players. And then when Demarcus comes back, only. I think that's, their confidence is going to be high, so no matter you know, how that changes, I mean, you know, with his with his back in the lineup, um, it only help us going make us stronger as a, as a cohesive unit going into the playoffs, and, and that's the plan. So really focus on just making those guys feel comfortable, making them simplify things so they understand you know, what what how they're going to be most uh, uh, effective and efficient for us, and, and then buying in and just doing it. Following up on the Marcus, how is it going to be you know, so late in the season having a guy of his caliber to try to bring him into your nucleus when you guys are already have a room? I mean, I have no idea because we've never had to do something like this before, but that makes it interesting. Um, it creates an opportunity for us to continue to evolve as a team. Um, and throughout the 82 games, it's kind of like you can chop it up into almost like quarters around how the season's going to go and what many goals we can set for ourselves to stay focused, to stay on task and on target. Uh, when DeMarcus comes back, that's going to be opportunity, but also, like you said, a challenge in terms of figuring it out on the fly. Good news is he is extremely skilled, extremely smart. He's going to be bought in to what we're trying to do. Um, that I feel like it'll be, no matter how long it takes, it'll be, it'll be better for us. Let's do one last one for a couple years. I'm going to remember that right now. Yeah. <laughs> I already know you won. Steph, what's it like having your brother in law, Damian Lee, around? And just, I'm sure you guys have a bit, already had a bit of a relationship. So, what's that dynamic like for you? It's fun. I mean, part of the family, obviously. We uh, spent a lot of time the last two years, especially um, working out been out here in the Bay with Santa Cruz and whatnot and I've been rooting him on when he was in Atlanta last year, you know, playing. So to have him obviously in training camp as a two-way player back and forth, the opportunity he has to impact our team, it'd be fun. And obviously I get to keep close eyes on him. All right, four more. And thanks, Steph. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, that concludes our time in the uh, interview room. Uh, again, practice tomorrow. Media will probably still be going on out here for a little while longer. Practice tomorrow.